Yeah, I'm ready. Do it. What's up, everybody? This is Taryn Schlevy with TarynTheHype.com. Our first time streaming on Twitch. First time. Next Good job. job. Not like not for like for our at all ever, but like for the shows. For the shows. So we hope that you guys enjoy it. Enjoy hope it. Hope that you subscribe. Subscribe. If you don't know what it is, it's TarynTheHype.com. TarynTheHype.com. If you want to support us, you can always go to patreon.com slash tearing the hype. So that way we can get more fans, more subscribers, and maybe better quality video for you too. Just you know, all for you guys. Oh fuck, now I gotta switch to find your name. I don't know your name. <laughs> oh man, yeah. if only I had a name that was easy to remember. Alright. And I am joined by my best friend here, the Taco Bell takeout master Matthew Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand the reference because we have never met in real life, uh, Taco Bell is a very favorite restaurant of mine to partake in, (laughs) uh, mainly because the food is very inexpensive, and which usually means the quality is not very good, but it's, you know, fast food. Uh, But I can get lots of food for not very much money, and then impress everybody by eating disgusting amounts of food. It's really amazing how our society and our generation nowadays is becoming to the point where we don't want quantity. (laughs) Or we don't want quality. quality. We want quantity over quality. We don't mind sacrificing the quality for either the convenience or quantity of something. So it's like, yeah, I could have this nice steak, but screw it. I'll just go get a cheeseburger at at McDonald's or Wendy's. I don't want this. It's good. I don't want this ten ounce steak. I'm gonna have nine mini cheeseburgers. (laughs) You know, it's still meat ish. It can taste like meat. That's my vote every time. Yeah. But guys, so like I said, welcome to the podcast. This is our movie cast for our discussion about movies. If you guys didn't know, you can always find us on TaranTheHype.com. I and myself am on Twitter at Augie272, A-U-G-I-E-272. You are on Twitter at... At KrillinFlip337. Had to slow down the speaking in there to make sure you had time to So drink. I had time to take a drink. Yeah, I thought I had a little bit more. That's why I took a drink. I got your back. And then I realized that, oh crap, I am going to run out of time. So let's go ahead and jump right into the name of the story. Let's go. Jumping in all that dang old story. Right about right, 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 right now, man. <laughs> yep. So what's up? <laughs> Off to a great start. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so anyway, so guys, if you didn't know, this is the number one podcast where you get to choose your review. <laughs> what we do is we take our information, whether it's um, a new movie, old movie, whatever it may be, and we say what was hyped about it, what wasn't hyped about it. Why it was overhyped, why it wasn't overhyped, and give you kind of a biased and unbiased opinion review. So you guys can save your money or spend your money depending on what your perspective is. So, cool. First and foremost, I want to know the most important thing. What you been watching? <laughs> what have we been watching? Well, let's see. Last week, in the past week, I have gone to the movies twice to see a movie in the theaters, which for me is kind of crazy. Um, and then I have been watching. Oh, and we went. I went to the movies. We yeah, saw we Logan went. last week. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about that. So we'll talk about that. And then I also saw Beauty and the Beast, the live action. And I I release. saw a posting about that on Facebook. So I want to. Yeah. I need I need some more details. So so I'm really excited there's, about there's this Beauty, and she meets a beast. No, shut up. So <laughs> Beauty and the Beast has got to be one of my favorite Disney movies of all. Time. Okay, like not <clears throat> like the one. I mean, it's up there in yeah. the running for the top three. But I mean, like it's. Tale of Time and Love. Like Tale as old as time. I mean, everyone knows this movie. Everyone loves this movie. Song as old as rhyme. Regardless if you're a millennial or, or you know, Anybody. using your walker. I mean, people know this movie. So True. do you think that, first and foremost, tell me your opinion of the movie. First and foremost, are we getting into this as a topic already? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know how deep no we were going into this. No okay. more <laughs> Just cut right through the all We'll talk way. about it later and then coming back to it. No, we're going to talk about it right now. Okay. So... Yeah. So how are you question? So first and foremost, I, as someone who loves the movie, who knows the story, knew what to expect going into it, did it deliver? I was shocked and appalled by this twist that this handsome, rugged, charming Gaston fellow wasn't a hero in this. Because, I mean, who would have thought that Gaston was a such a bad guy? Was this written by M. Night Shyamalan? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Christopher Nolan. Oh, I gotta get our sound effect. Up. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because <laughs> we have. <laughs> that might be better fit for the uh, next podcast, but um, no. So, um, I would I wouldn't go so far as to say it's my top five Disney movies. Like it's probably top ten for sure. Like the music is is classic, and it's one of those things. That, like I don't realize that I know all the songs until I'm watching it and I'm singing along with every single song. Right, right. Um, 
And I'm like, oh, I don't really like Beauty and the Beast. It's cool. It's fine. All right. Oh, oh so I really like this movie when I'm watching it every time. Like, so, it always surprises me how much I really like this movie. Wait, so back up. So this wasn't, like, one of your favorite princess movies going into it. Oh, okay. No, maybe so top you were, ten, but not, you it's not nearly top movie. five, yeah. Okay. Like, I'm on the lower end of the hype, especially for the live-action version of it, because I was like, I don't know that it necessarily needs it. Yeah, Jungle Book ended up working out really well, um, surprisingly so. Right. Um, yeah, I know, right? Um. So I was surprised going into it that I enjoyed Beauty and the Beast as much as I did. Um, but then again, like I said, I, I'm always surprised by how much I like that movie in general because I don't think of it as one of the top Disney movies that I care about. Okay, so now the biggest question that everyone asks, people who do or don't know the movie, but they know it's a remake, do you think that they delivered on paying homage, like being respectful to the original film but also making it their own? Like, I think so, yeah. There was a few little twists here and there that I thought were were appropriate. I mean, like, even something as small as when Belle is in the village at the very beginning and mm-hmm. she's doing her song. Bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonjour. So they're doing the whole bonjour thing, and then she gets to the library. And in the cartoon, it's, like, a pretty good-sized library. Like, it takes up an entire room and all that stuff. Like, Not accurate. Like, floor to ceiling. <laughs> she goes to the library that's, like, I think it was part of the church, which mm-hmm. would make sense because churches have the books and whatnot. Right. But, like, their library is, like, this many books on a table and she goes in she brings one back and then she takes another one out that's like 10 books something like that? yeah basically which would make sense for a small little town in the french countryside to not have you know an entire bookstore's worth of books hmm. and i and i never thought about it. i was like well that totally makes sense this makes it feel like more realistic and grounded and there was like a few little things where they changed some of the well, songs now i know why she's read it twice <laughs> right so, like, some of the songs get kind of tweaked here and there a little bit. I a little that. more so than they did with Jungle Book. Um, but not anything that, like, upset me or anything like that. Like, it felt like more of a modern take on the songs. Okay. And still kept all the same themes and the same kind of heart behind it. So The spirit of the song was alive <laughs> and well. I, I know it's a, like a, originally like a play and stuff like that, but when you say more modern take, they're not like auto-tuning guests on or anything like that, are they? <laughs> maybe they are, maybe they are, and I'll save that as a surprise <laughs> no, when you get to the seriously, tell me. I gotta know. <laughs> no, there is no auto-tuning. <laughs> Good. It's, not, it's not that. It's just like they're not taking it word for word from the original animated movie and just transposing it into the live action. And that's one thing that actually concerns me, is that I'm actually, I since I love this movie so much, I mm-hmm. mean... I don't want it to be too far off the scale. Do you think that it no. took too many liberties? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that it's just far enough off that it feels like it's on its own take on the movie. It'd be like going and seeing the play of a movie and not just the mm-hmm. movie. Where like they take a few different turns here and there. Some characters act slightly differently. But it's still telling the same story. It's still getting you to the same place. It's just the path. It's like it's slightly notes, right? different. So it's like reading a fifty-page book when you're reading, which was based off of a two hundred-page book, sort of thing. Mm, I mean, kind of. Like it's not cutting stuff out. It's just okay. taking a slightly different path to get you to the same places okay. and the same characters along the way. It would <laughs> like, be like, like Dragon like Ball Super, <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> or like if we're playing Heavy Rain, we're getting to the same point. Well, okay, Heavy Rain's a bad example because there's like thirteen endings. Um, we're playing Indigo Until Prophecy, Dawn, so. or Until Dawn, um, and you're basically getting to the same point at the end, but, or, okay, no, 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 better example, Telltale Games, where they mm-hmm. branch out and come back, they branch out and come back. So, like, there's a few things that kind of deviate from how it was, yeah. but it still comes back to all those key points um, and the key characters that you care about. Okay, Tanner, Tanner will remember you said that. So. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, and that being said... Um, I thought that all the characters that lived inside the castle were awesome. Very well done. And there was even a couple new characters who really? weren't in the animated movie that I, I liked. And they did some more stuff. Even Ewan McGregor? He did a good job as Cosworth? Didn't even Not realize it was... You, yeah, I didn't even realize that was Lu- Ewan McGregor. Really? Until the credits rolled. Out. I didn't recognize anybody. Really? Yeah. Even Ian McKellen? Nope. Wow. Because I, because... I wasn't paying that close of attention, but it was like... I know a couple of you, and I looked up on IMDb a couple times to be like, who are you? I know your voice. Who are you? I know your voice. But, yeah, like a couple of them I didn't realize. So, I mean, with that, I know that a lot of people were excited because it is a musical. There's mm-hmm. a lot of songs in there. A and, lot of songs. And Ian McGregor has actually been known to sing like about he has a good three, voice. three or four yeah, other yeah. movies. Moulin Rouge, you know, Down With Love, all, all those other ones. Moulin Rouge, good um, Now, speaking of someone else who's with familiar Broadway and also singing musical is Josh Gad. Mm-hmm. How did he do as a character? As a he, he's LeFou. LeFou, yeah. Yeah, he was the one that I had to look up during the movie. I was like, 
who the hell is this guy? He looks kind of familiar, but I know his voice. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. do I know his voice? And yeah, he you know he does awesome. He's the voice of Olaf, he's in, so he can sing. Oh yeah, he does a great job. Yeah, yeah. And he's I was becoming like, a big fan of like Disney movies. Yeah, he's a, a lot of Disney movies. So. Yeah, I've noticed that too. So yeah, he was good. Um, and I like they do something kind of different with LeFou towards the end that I really appreciated. And that's one of those things is like I don't want to spoil it or anything like that, but they um, kind of tweak his character a little bit. Just to make him... Okay. Well, no, that wasn't specifically it. But, I mean, do you want me to say this thing that I'm talking about? Or do you want me to keep it spoiler-free? Well, let me say, is it going to impact, like, the story? Not it? really. I mean, then I don't really care because I'm going to go see the movie. So it I turns mean, out LeFou is an alien. <laughs> that's what it was. Okay, it's always seemed off to me. Like, yeah, especially I know. Those, those antennas? Yeah, know. those antennas should have been a giveaway. And that tail, man. What is he a Saiyan over here? <laughs> well, I figured the tale was like they covered up really well with him just like having one of those hats, like you know, <laughs> like Davy Crockett, like they yeah. had like one of those hunting hats just hanging yeah. there. But that's a very nice cover up. Yeah, it was, job, it was very well done, very tasteful. <laughs> but uh, so, like as the film goes on, LeFou kind of starts realizing. Well, you want me to tell you because it doesn't impact the story necessarily. But as if you go with your best judgment, if you think it's going to be a spoiler for our fans or for right. then don't do it. If you spoiler. Alert! If you want media blackout on this movie that just came out last week, skip ahead about like two minutes, and we, I won't bring it up again. Ready? Two minutes. I, yeah, go two minutes. Ready? And go. go. Okay. So as the course of the movie goes on, mm-hmm. LeFou is like Gaston's sidekick, just like he is in the cartoon. Right, right. Um, and then the more you see Gaston, you realize he's kind of an ass. And then he goes from oh, being an you ass to a jerk <laughs> okay. to being like full on awful and LeFou kind of I don't know why he doesn't know this about Gaston in the first place since they've known each other since they were like little kids and stuff okay um but like as Gaston goes farther and farther down the hill LeFou starts kind of trying to peel away from him and by Mm. the end of the movie he kind of has distanced himself from Gaston and when they're storming the castle LeFou fights back against the villagers and trying to get them to stop Really? Yeah, I like that. So it was super cool. I was I like, can, I was not expecting it. I um, wish they did that in the original. That was that's a really nice twist. Yeah. So I like that character. Um, that that's one of like the small little character tweaks that they kind of do during the movie. There's a couple other things here and there um, that I really liked. So cool. that's good to hear. I like that. That's a good interpretation. So now for someone who is living under a rock and has no idea what Beauty and the Beast is, mm-hmm. do you think they're going into this and like, what, what the hell was that garbage? How were they getting this idea from? I think of anything, they'd probably if you had no idea what Beauty and the Beast was, you'd probably go into it, and it's a Disney movie, so you'd be kind of hard pressed not to like it. Okay. Because the characters are very likable, the songs are endearing, they're catchy, um, and the story is just kind of one of those timeless stories that so, speaks to any generation. Tale. Yeah. It's old. Excuse me. Um, oh, that water time. is really getting to me tonight. Probably the gummy worms too. Make up for but, it for um, me last last week. When I was there you go. That's that true. Soda water. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid sparkling water. Um, Speaking of which, okay. <laughs> no, no sparkling water. But uh, no, I I think if anything, they would probably get come back from and want to go see the original nice. too, okay. just because you know see how it was different or go back and watch this classic that it, they may not have watched back in the day. Yeah, they have a, there's a lot of situations with that where people were like watching the the new movie they never knew it was a remake or a rehash or. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reinspiration, like you know, King and I, or you know, Anna and the King, or um, Music Man, or I mean, there's tons of them out yeah. there. But, but very yeah. interesting. So it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Good Pick it know. up when it comes out on DVD and stuff. All right. Well, um, I recommend it. If you like Beauty and the Beast, go check it out. I'm you like see. Disney, go check it out. You like kids' movies, go check it out. You like musicals. Yeah, I'm gonna see it. So no worries there. I can't. What the hell? I'm not buying anything. Don't... <laughs> what are you doing? So anything. Moving on. Moving on. Is there anything else you've been watching besides Logan, which we're about to talk about? I started watching Iron Fist on Netflix. I got two episodes in. Um, I was kind of watching it while I was playing um, some games the other day, so I had it kind of playing in the background. I've, I have a feeling I need to go back and rewatch the second episode a little bit more because um, I feel like I was missing out on it. The show. <laughs> I found it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh. That needs to be a sound clip. Wait, so you were watching Iron Fist? Iron Fist. <laughs> Money in the bank. <laughs> so that thing is not going to get old fast, I'm sure. 
Um, it's my hands. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment about how much you enjoy the sound effects. So, from my perspective, before you get started into yeah. Iron Fist, I'm going to ask you some questions. But with Iron Fist, I've been seeing a lot of the reviews. I haven't watched it myself yet. But yeah. A lot of people aren't liking it as, him as a character and aren't liking, aren't being able to relate to it as much as the other defenders. Yeah. So. so I noticed that a lot of the reviews that are coming out have been very negative um, about the show in general, about him as a character or the actor. Um, but I've also noticed on Twitter a lot of personal opinions from people, not reviews, um, have been coming out that it's while it's not the best series, it's still a good series. Right. Um, and that it, like Luke Cage, kind of picks up after about halfway through it and it gets progressively better towards the end. So, I mean, like I said, I'm only two episodes in. It's definitely not... Um, I would probably rate it as the fourth best Netflix superhero show. Right? I'm it... two episodes in. Oh, only I've right. watched two episodes, um, but I wasn't completely focused on the episode. Okay. So I'm going to have to go back and rewatch episode two. Yeah, I plan on starting it this next week and watching it then. Yeah, the um, villains that they have in here for right now that I've seen so far, I'm not liking them because they all feel kind of carbon copies of other characters who are in the show. So it's okay. kind of hard to distinguish what's going on. But again... That might be because I wasn't fully paying attention to right. it. But yeah. I like it so far. Um, I'm definitely going to keep watching it the rest of the way. Yeah, as we've, as we discussed, I think that, I mean, him as a character and his abilities seems like the most interesting to me. Kind yeah. of like has that original, like, Christopher Nolan, Batman Begins type of feel to it where he goes and trains and learns and then comes back and fights. Yeah. And taking over his business again. But... I can see why that could be dull to some people now in today's age because yeah. of how much we've already been immersed into that experience and that type of you know scenarios. Yeah, it's not as exciting as seeing a blind person go toe to toe with a bunch of ninjas or a super strong, powerful He's female really character He's who just doesn't Come take on. crap from anybody, and or you know, big strong black guy who's got impenetrable skin who doesn't want to fight anybody. Wait, he just wants to yeah, juggernauts in it, <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, like, even Luke Cage, like, he doesn't want to fight. He just kind of wants to protect his hood and make sure his family and his people are safe. Selfish. And he's not actively <laughs> looking for fights 90% of the time. Um, so, like, but somehow all these they characters... <laughs> all these, I know, right? All these characters all have, like, this cool, unique kind of twist into them. And, like, Iron Fist doesn't have that, like you said, like, that relatable feeling to him. He's right. been presumed dead since he was for, like, 15 years or whatever. Because um, his family's plane crashed in the Himalayas, and then he was the only one who survived the crash. Tarzan, Captain America. Yeah, I mean, it's like not the most original of stories. He's just this plain-looking guy who basically looks like a hobo living on the streets. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look um, great either. No, not at all. So, <laughs> I'm just like... No, not at all. He does not look good. I think that's least. why i got to start doing is saying that I'm not looking for danger, and then it'll find me, or I'm not looking for a fight, and I'll start getting more fights. Maybe I should start saying I'm not looking for money, and then more money finds me. That's a good point. Hey, I that's that. a good... <laughs> I'm not looking for more fans. No? Oh, good. No one's there. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a shot. Your had wish is granted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mighty Shenron. <laughs> I, a couple episodes back is when Shenron came out and was telling the Saiyans about the Super Saiyan God, so it was pretty funny. Oh, okay. Watching him get all bent Worked out up. of shape about seeing beers. We, we started watching it. You know, we're part of the part where like, Boo's arguing with him about the food in the boat. Okay. So. Um, but... Oh, uh, so... Goku and Beerus are just now fighting, like for real fighting, and it's episode twelve of the series. So, oh, okay, so it does pick up a little. It bit. picks up. Yeah, they get done with their shenanigans. All right, it takes a while to get past it. It's like episode eight. So he starts powering up at ten. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> I think episode ten is when yes. they get to stick to your originals. They do his uh, transformation, and then at the end, he's like, he's in his god form, and then episode eleven is him starting to play around in god form and then episode nice. 12 was when they start for, uh fighting for real cool so so we'll talk more about iron fist once we both watch the full thing but yeah you know, like by next time. week I'll, I'll be completely done it's with like it. our third time talking about it's it. just it's it was a bad week for it to come out because my my daughter was in has spring break this week yeah so she's home too. um and usually during the day is when i would have been Kids. watching it while i've been working and stuff we'll so figure. yeah but anyway so now, one of our topics that I really want to discuss with you is Logan. We both went and saw it last week. Okay. We both had our opinions about it, but since we got out of the movie theater at 1 a.m. Seriously, like that was a late yeah. freaking movie. We, um, we were a little too tired to broadcast it, um, so we're going to talk about it now. I know it's been out in theaters for about three weeks now. Mm -hmm. It's been doing really good. Not, yeah. um, not amazing, not like top of the charts, but, no, still, but still pretty good. 
Um, nice way for you know, Wolverine to go out. Yeah, it was a nice send off for the character. So now and the actors. I, I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. I've asked you again more and more times. How many of the original comics of Logan have you read? Of Logan? Yeah. Like, well, are you talking about just like Wolverine comics? Are you talking about the Old Man Logan series? Any of the story that relates to the movie? I don't think the movie relates to any stories in the comic books. I'm after watching the movie, they definitely were picking and choosing what story elements to incorporate. So you did catch some things that were in some of the comics, though, right? Yeah, like there's some kind of themes that are in there. There's some characters and crossover. But it's not like there's a one-for-one comic that correlates to the movie. Okay. So with this, let's go ahead and get our, our opinions out of the board. When it comes to someone who has not seen any Wolverine movies yet, yeah. hasn't seen any X-Men movies... I think you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> no. What do you think that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that their opinion's gonna be if they go and see this movie and they're like, "This is their first impression of Wolverine. This is their first impression of Hugh Jackman and what to expect." Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, related to <laughs> the like regular Mega Man villain. <laughs> <laughs> Jackman. <laughs> so, Hugh Jackman. <coughs> Jackman. Sorry. Jackman? Jackman. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yes, anyway. <laughs> how would they Captain feel Jackman. having never seen any X-Men or... Yeah, so, I mean, what do you think this type of impression is going to lay onto someone who's... This is their first Wolverine, first X-Men movie, first mutant movie to go see? Um, it would be an interesting one to be a first. I feel like there's not much... To go up from there, it'd all be downhill if you went and saw the others. I mean, to an extent. Um, I think it was a really good story that definitely stands on its own. Mm -hmm. You don't have to necessarily be well-versed in the terrible lore of the X-Men movies because it doesn't even stand up if you start looking at it critically. There's so many plot holes in Every single movie, even after they reboot, like they still have all these plot holes right. that that's don't one, make sense. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause that's one thing with when I saw Logan that I really appreciated. Yeah. I appreciated. I mentioned this outside the theaters too. Is like how honest they kept this movie. They didn't try to blow something out of proportion. They didn't try to, you know, make this a huge perspective. They didn't try to say, oh well, there's this you know cliche of a super powerful guy and you got to stop this super powerful guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, and rescue the damsel in the, in the castle. And, they kind of did, but, I mean, but it wasn't like I mean, but so it, on the nose about it. Yeah, it wasn't so obvious, yeah. right? It was, it was the fact that it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was more better. Uh, <laughs> Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> right. So you get stuck in a time loop. <laughs> it was. <laughs> no, I think that even the action, like the action, was just if. He's so into that character now mm. that whenever he responds, I think that his natural re- reaction isn't so much acting anymore. That's how he that he's, would behave because he is now that character. He's immersed himself so <clears throat> much from all the previous movies that he'll do that honor for someone who's going to see it for the first time, who's never seen the other movie. They're like, wow, he really knows how to behave as that character. Yeah, I think that's one thing they'll catch on as the most. I mean, whenever if you're like me, if someone who doesn't read every single comic, or if you're like you, who, who does, like. Mm-hmm. You don't think that you're like, man, Wolverine's a fucking asshole. <laughs> that guy's a jerk. He's always the dick of the <laughs> kind group. Kind of is, like, though, yeah. And this movie definitely kind of nails that hammer on the head that he is not the nicest guy. I think the first words that he said in the movie were like, get the fuck out of my car, or something like that. Pretty like, much, yeah. Know. Like, his first line had fuck in it. And I was like, all right, we're off to the races then. We're so definitely, we are fighting against we Deadpool. We are. This, <laughs> right? Seriously. We're in... We're, Heavily embracing this R rating that we got. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I think that you should. If you're able to get that R rating, you need to embrace it to the full potential. He's a character that definitely can use an R rating. I don't know that they just... Like, my one takeaway from this movie was that I felt the language is a little heavy-handed in like, there. Like, Deadpool a was a Uncharted lot... 4. <laughs> I didn't even think Uncharted 4 was as bad as watching oh, yeah. Um But, like, Deadpool, I kind of went in knowing it's going to be a little more off-the-wall, crazy shenanigans going it, yeah. in. Wolverine, I didn't expect it to be that much. Like, I, I knew some of it was going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the violence was going to be there, which was why they wanted to push for the R rating. Great. Um, but, yeah, I felt like the the vulgarities, the language in there was a little too much. There were points where it was Especially the first yeah. half of the movie. The second half, it definitely tapers off, but that first half is like... Okay. It's like watching an 80s action movie almost. And that's also another thing I mentioned, too, is like when it comes to the action, like... Mm-hmm. 
like the train chase or like the action of the car moving around driving the car fancy try to get away from enemies yeah it wasn't so much like well we're there mutants we just got to make it look really cool with cgi and just yeah. you know, move on to the next scene they didn't they they chose a different route a mm-hmm. higher route and i appreciated that it gave more to his character because he's old and gritty and kind of mm-hmm. referencing back to the older and the grittier films yeah i'm not sure that was a connection they were trying to make but it resonated with me a little it bit. it wasn't so much a superhero movie it felt very much like just a a movie, yeah, it like gave, an action movie, because like it gave said. him more of a struggle. It yeah. gave it, it showed him more of the weaker points. Not that oh well, he's a superhero or he's a mutant. Well, he just has this ability; he doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah, he has the struggle where he has to deal with it, and now he doesn't have his life handed to him because he has a superpower. Yeah, and, and it was nice seeing that in the character. Yeah, and they really handled it well too, because like even if he wanted to do that because he has these abilities, because of his life choices and how he is at this point in time. Like, his healing factor is not as strong as it used to be. His his claws aren't working as well as they should. Right. So, like, his body is degrading, so he can't be this over-the-top crazy action star for, like, a superhero movie like you would come to expect him to be. Um, which was an interesting take on him. Like, what do you do with a superhero once he becomes kind of past his prime? Hmm. Like, that's almost kind of what it felt like. Yeah. Like, watching um, a little bit watching the TV show Powers. That oh, yeah. PlayStation had, where it's like, what happens to a superhero after he's lost his superpowers? Like, how does he yeah. handle it type of a thing? I really wish that, that that series had more of a production value to it. Yeah. I would have done so much better. It could have been really good, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I enjoyed it. Um, the second season got a little off the rails. I didn't... I, um, I either just started the second season, or I didn't get to it. I don't I, remember. Yeah, I watched both the full seasons. Uh, the second season, I think they did a better job yeah. you know, making it have more of a location in the second season, but... We'll get back to Logan, um, but definitely I think that it could have done better if they gave it more money or they yeah. a bigger process for it. So Logan. Um, <clears throat> so now going into the fact that now we know what someone who doesn't know what to expect, what we would recommend for them mm-hmm. is that it's going to be interesting, going to be exciting, and going to be good, but make sure that you're expected for an R rating and you know, blah blah. Yeah. When it comes to someone who is a big fan of the comics, who who this is what they love, they would love Old Man Logan. This is all they've been waiting for. And they're glad that this is going to be his last movie. Yeah. How do you think they delivered on the aspect of the fans? I think they did a really good job paying a lot of fan service. Um, whether it was throwing in some kind of obscure, well, not obscure if you're a comics fan, but some of like the deeper cuts in X-Men characters like Caliban, who's one of the Morlocks who lives underground with people. Um, or some of the, uh, the newer characters like, obviously... Uh, what's her name? Laura. Mm. Um, I don't know her name from the comics. I only know her as X-23. Um, <laughs> I love the moment. I'm sorry I'm going to break you up right. But that moment when you leaned over and you're like, that's the most accurate depiction of the parenthood I've ever seen. Oh, <laughs> where he's like, no. And she's like, yes, no. Yes, no. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Shut, shut, up, shut up. Stop crying. We'll, we'll do it. it. Like, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> was like, seriously. I just want to I say, like, I have been in that. Meme it. The struggle is real. Seriously. <laughs> like, Thank you, Hollywood, for the accurate depiction of what it's like having a child on a road trip or somewhere in a stressful situation. Because it's like. Always, it's like the kid's like fine, or just you don't see the kid or whatever, and it's like okay, that was that was well done, well done, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so as a comics fan, I I liked it a lot. Um, I went into it expecting more of, like you said, the old man Logan storyline, which is Logan is one of the last surviving mutants in the comic world, um, and this isn't like a mainline; it's an offshoot, kind of a what if scenario. And, Are you going to eat those worms? No, I'm apparently just going to play with them. <laughs> you um, I'll eat them. them by species. <laughs> I cut them in half. Um, Segregation. So in the... <laughs> no, no. I, they're together. They're just in half. <laughs> they're they're together. not separate. <laughs> so anyways... All worms matter. In the, <laughs> in the Old Man Logan series, I won't get into too many spoilers because if you like comics and haven't read it, definitely give it a shot because there's some very cool well thought out story premises story going on behind it for what's going on in the world um but basically like super villains took over the united states mm-hmm. and logan is one of the very few surviving mutants like in the entire world kind of like it is in the movie where they kind of gloss over the fact that mutants all just kind of right. died off and they never really get into why or how um i kind of thought that they would allude to it more like they do in Old Man... Well, Old Man Logan's comic, they tell specifically why there's not very many mutants left. But um, 
Um, now, I think they did that on a particular reason. I think that they they left it open. So they made a few points here and there, like you know what happened to the X Men, yeah, or you know how that ended. I almost felt like and that's a never... deleted scene or something that'll come out on DVD. But I mean, that gives them the option to say, well, in case they ever want to invite him back, just for like a scene at the bar scene like that, or something, yeah, like whatever, whatever it may be, or a post thing where he's walking through an area, they can mm-hmm. do that with a new series, a new trilogy of yeah. X Men or. Or the next, uh, what's the the futuristic kids one? Um, the what? The group of X Men who are like younger, next generation or something like that, or X generation or I don't know, whatever. There's too many X Men series yeah. to keep track of. There's a lot of, <laughs> but I mean, I think that they did that on purpose to leave it open for that particular reason. Um, I don't know. I like. I'll tell you off air so that way I don't spoil it for any fans and that kind of thing. But I think that they probably shot something for it and then cut it because they felt like it might be too dark of a character thing. Right. But um, in the series, he goes on this road trip with Hawkeye as his old companion. And Logan is like basically a pacifist. He's settled down. He has a wife. He's got one or two kids. I don't remember. Um, but he's living on a farm that's controlled by... Logan is, right? Logan is, yeah. yeah. So like already completely different from the movie. Um, he's living on a farm with his wife and family. And he doesn't fight anyone. He's just complete... I'm pacifist. I'm not getting in any more fights whatsoever. No matter what, I'm not doing anything like that. Like, he made a promise to himself right. and he's keeping it for years and years and years. And there's, like, this hillbilly hulks who are in control of the area where Logan and his family live. And so they're coming in to basically, like, collect taxes on his farm. Yeah. Kind of like the farm scene in Logan where there was a bunch of jerks who were harassing the farmers. Um, and so Logan needs to go get a bunch of money that he doesn't have because he's a farmer okay. and um, Hawkeye comes and he's like hey I've got this job that is going to pay a lot of money we need to go on a road we need to take some stuff to I forget like basically they have to go across the country um, in their driving All right. and so Logan goes on this trip to make the money and then when he comes back um, shit happens and so he has to go kick some ass but um, okay, because you know it's Logan so he's got to get in a fight at some point yeah because so, apparently he's not looking for trouble. He never is. <laughs> it just finds him. And then he finds That's Iron Fist. That's a very Fist. Recurring, recurring theme, yeah, right? I'm just a nice guy. So I'm going to do that all the movies from now on. Yeah. Like, I bet Vin Diesel's not looking for trouble. <laughs> he just wants a family and yeah. to drive a quarter mile at a time. You see The Rock right there? He's not looking for trouble. <laughs> Although Vin Diesel was the pacifist. When he was a babysitter. All right, anyways, so moving on. So, <laughs> so Logan, I think that they took some really nice deviations from the comics. Um, going into it, that was the storyline I was more or less expecting to see. Um, Are you happy with what I'm you saw? I'm very happy with what I saw. Okay. Like, I would have liked to have seen that kind of stuff, but there's too many licensing issues and whatever to really tell that story. So, I think the story, that they, they kind of lifted some of the road trippy buddy stuff with him and Xavier. Um and I think that they... Dude, he was driving in. me crazy. He's fucking annoying. Why? Xavier. Why? Because you remind me just like the TV show. Oh, He's like... Ah, 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 ah. I'm sorry. I did this on purpose. <laughs> I didn't mean to kill us. <laughs> like, like, come on, man. Like, you, Why are you always ruining the plan? He's <laughs> too old. Poor Xavier. But, uh, I yeah, so I was well very... I was a child. <laughs> that was so weird watching that because I'm like, damn, that's like only, what... 10 years in the future or something like that. It was in like late 2020, early 2030 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, whatever. So I was like, damn, this is so weird thinking about watching something as an old person to a younger kid. And I'll be like, I remember when I was watching the original X-Men movie. Oh, but I did think it was weird that like <laughs> they referenced the X-Men comic books as like stories of the X-Men that are like embellishments of like their real tales and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was interesting. Like that was kind of weird and a little bit like... It's like they hyperbolic. I they, guess they were trying to like break the Super fourth wall, but still not mm-hmm. make it obvious. They wanted to be like, oh, well, this is part of our universe, but yeah. it's also not. Yeah, like um, I was trying to kind of think of if all... there's anything that is like that in our world, but there's not like anybody who you'd want to necessarily tell constant stories about. I guess. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. But overall, I really liked it. Um, I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Um, I was also surprised by how long it was. Mm-hmm. And while it felt really long, you're like, wow, it seemed like forever ago that they were in Mexico or that they were on at this certain point in their journey. When you get towards the end, 
Um, but it like it never Wait, really? stops. The There's same. never <laughs> like any real lulls in the movie where it feels like, all right, this is dragging on too long. We need to keep it moving. <laughs> so only one time I was I was like that. I actually did have one of those moments. Did you? Was the second time when the professor was having like his his seizure his aneurysm situation where like, <laughs> right, yeah and i mean i guess I was that, like, that scene kind of drug a little bit i was like bit wow there. they're really i mean the the sound that they make for it for an effect was kind of annoying and i understand they were trying to make the point if you do it like 10 to 15 seconds i get it but there's a point where it's like he's like on the ground floor outside like in the parking lot and it's like okay, and he has to go i got to get to the building and yeah. like they go through the lobby they go in the elevator they go waiting in the elevator they go Down through the, the hallway, hallway. They like, go through like, the oh door. my gosh <laughs> get him oh, no, there already. we got Please. it Please. <laughs> but i mean i feel the exact same way i i don't know a whole lot of the story i knew like the gist mm. of what to expect and going into this as a fan of all X Men movies, mutant movies, you know, sci fi, whatever you want yeah. to call it. It was very entertaining to me too. It was refreshing seeing like the type of style they took. Mm-hmm. The action was exciting for me. Yeah. Um, the effects weren't too over the top, but they weren't too low budgety. I mean, I think it was a good quality movie. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, it's not going to be like my number one movie of all time or not the number no. one movie for the year, but I think it's definitely up in the running for the year. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe top five. Yeah. Top five for the year so far. Yeah, there's a chance for that. But I mean, I'm just saying that as a. Not a fan who has seen the other movies. I think you'll definitely yeah. enjoy it as well. Um, just make sure you have, like we said before, your expectations set. Yeah, clearly. So, so that's what you've been watching. That's what I've been so watching. What the, have the you rest been of the watching? intro of the show. <laughs> but I mean, if you guys didn't know, that was kind of our hype of the show. So for later on, future hype, 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 hype. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the effect right now, but um, Beauty and the Beast and Logan were the hype of the show. What I've been watching, is there anything else you've been watching first off? Or? Not really, no. Okay. A little bit here and there, but nothing. Um, I'm going to talk about a few things that are small and really fast. Uh, That's what she said. <laughs> lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> good thing this isn't recording. Um, <laughs> me and Jordan finished watching a new series, um, which if you guys have not seen it out there, I'd definitely recommend to check it out. Very fun, very entertaining, very anime. It's uh, The Devil is a Part-Timer. Okay. The premise of it is what it is, is you have a... Magical land of four of islands <clears throat> centering around a fifth island. The main fifth island is where the devil lives, and the four, all of his generals are at different islands taking over those lands. Okay. What happens is that there's this mighty hero who comes and defeats all, like, three of those uh, leaders, and the fourth one comes to Lucifer saying, hey, this is happening. We need to get the fuck out of here. And the devil's like, okay. And so... While the battles are raging on, he uses like a, a time warp magical power and goes through there. He doesn't know where he's going to end up, but they actually end up in you know today's age, mm-hmm. today's time in like Japan. So that was like somewhere. back in the past. It was like it was olden times. It wasn't olden times. It was actually a different realm altogether. Okay, so, so like a different universe, different dimension. Universe. Yeah, oh, yeah, got it, got it. Okay. So and then they end up in today's world, and it's funny because when they come through that time warp, they end up looking at themselves in mirrors, and they're like you know like. 25 year old teens okay and apparently because that warp took so much of their magical power they, they can't be their bodies regular. adapted to how the world were okay the world is so now they look like 25 23 year old teens um uh-huh. and so <laughs> this already sounds super anime <laughs> the funny thing about this okay. is like they're super casual about it like i'm making jokes the entire way yeah um the devil is actually hilarious okay he's a really funny character and his sidekick, the guy who jumped in the portal with him, was the other guy, like his you know, personal assistant. Is that know, a lieutenant vice guy? Vice president guy, yeah, lieutenant guy. Okay. He, um, he's always like trying to impress him and totally kiss ass to the best thing he can. It's like if the devil had Dwight Schrute sort of thick like, situation. It was, he's really funny. Like <laughs> He was assistant to the regional <laughs> yeah. devil. Assistant to the regional lieutenant. I'm the assistant devil. So, <laughs> assistant to the so devil. It's showing them like going through all these little like, monotonous things like... Having to get like a one bedroom studio apartment, having okay. to like learn how to make money, having to learn how to cross the street, getting picked up by the cops because it looks suspicious, right. and then like using the and then the explanation of like magic and stuff like that. It's very fun. <laughs> so what ends up happening is like, all right, well, since I can't take over my old world, I don't have a magic to get back. I'm gonna take over this world. And it's like, and he's very like upbeat, ready to go, very positive about everything, uh-huh. and the way he plans to take over the world is by working at a place called McDonald's. <laughs> Huh. Not McDonald's. I wonder McDonald's. what that is. 
and he so he's a part time employee. And he's like, okay. I want to be the best I ever can. Like he's like servicing very nice to people and like mopping, nice. making fries. And he's okay. he's very like he's like one day I'm gonna be the shift leader. Like he's like it's like <laughs> he's like that way I can take over my kingdom and rule. Like and they don't call it apartment; they call it his castle. And they're okay. Like he rides his bike to work, but he like gives his bike like this name like a dragon name. So like like okay. I'm gonna ride on like sir whatever and like. They ask if they can borrow. It's a very funny, very okay. like upbeat and fun, entertaining. It's only like thirteen episodes because it's one season. But me and Jordan really enjoyed it. Um, the plot twist, which you'll find out in the first episode, is that he, the hero who was the destined hero to, to kill him and slay him, <clears throat> uh-huh. ended up traveling there too. Of course, I was going to ask what happened to our intrepid exactly. hero. Exactly, and you find that at the very first episode. And so this entire time, she actually lost her power too. So she's actually a girl, of and course. she works at a call center. <laughs> And so she's trying to fight evil at the call center as well as trying to track him and make sure that he's not breaking the rules. It's huh. a very fun little story, very okay. entertaining. Um, so definitely check that out. Hmm. Um, if you also are into anime, I don't think I'm going to talk about. Um, we start, we've been about halfway through Full Metal Alchemist. Um, Brotherhood. Brotherhood? Yep. Good choice. Uh, How do you at, like it so far? We're on like episode seven, seven or eight. Um, oh, you're really early then. Um, it's good. It's a little <clears throat> darker than I thought it was going to be. It gets super dark. I was like, places. man, this There's is... some really bad episodes I, was like, I, was like, I can't imagine being in that situation like there are some oh, things that are just gruesome so episode I'm like, seven so i'm i'll let you know when i'm full that we'll discuss it some more but it's very good so far but hard to watch sometimes so there's a couple scenes that are really like even there's an internet meme of something that happens in the series i don't think you're there yet um that basically anytime somebody posts it everyone is like screw you, you need to die in a fire because that is the most traumatic shit ever. Yeah, it's, it's bad. I mean, the writers for that really wanted to be gruesome. Um, it, also, it, Well, there's some really gruesome parts, but it's like... It's not so it's much not gruesome like as in, like, over, graphically. It's not, like, over it's the not, top for no reason. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it, it feels, om- like, not to put it in... To put such a label on, but it feels almost like realistic to an extent. Yeah, it's exactly. It's more like, like you know, how Steve Carell has those moments like where, like, wow, mm-hmm. he's really awkward is making an awkward situation yeah this is how that anime is but we're not with awkwardness but with like depression and anxiety and with stress and with fear and, mm-hmm. and with and like i can't believe you put them in that situation kind of so very impressive i'm excited to see how it turns out and like what how the progress goes i want to know how far you are um there's a certain character i want to know if you've gotten to this one part or not <laughs> but i don't want to screw it up for you um, I'll, I'll, the other one me and Jordan recently watched, which is an older movie, was Cocoon because it was on HBO. Nice. <laughs> so we watched Cocoon. She watched the second one. I, I couldn't sit to the second one. Yeah, because I was playing. I didn't Horizon. even know there was a second one. Um, but yeah, Steve Gutenberg, man, what a, what a guy, what a character. <laughs> um, and I also recently watched Rogue One. Okay, I watched that um, a couple months back. You did, okay. Yeah, I went and saw it before it left theaters. I didn't care for it. Oh, I thought it was fun. I uh, thought it was a really... Like, my one complaint was that it didn't have the Star Wars crawl at the beginning of it, uh, which I thought when we talked about it, we are like, what do you think about that? And I was like, I think that it'll get added in the DVD cut of it, but... Which comes out, what, like a week or two? Yeah, basically, yeah. It's almost out by now. I only liked Donnie in. <laughs> he was hilarious. He was fun. <laughs> he was pretty cool. Um, the forces with me, I went with the force. The forces with me, I went with the force. Like, like that got obnoxious, <laughs> not going to lie. I was like, I get a dude. <laughs> But um, I just it didn't deliver for me. I, I was I don't know what it was. Maybe I was just bored with it. Maybe I've seen too many Star Wars movies. Maybe it was just too repetitive for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I liked the twist they made. So it didn't match you know a New Hope or match you know Episode Seven so much. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess it. I didn't Did really, you not I, like it because it was no, like a one off. It was all the these characters. Unique like, characters. Really, I didn't feel connected <clears throat> to them at all. Yeah. Like, they never seemed like they were. Really struggled. Like the lead girl actor, yeah, I didn't like her at all. I thought she did a horrible job. Hmm. I thought she didn't act worth the shit. Hmm. Like she just sat and stood there and was like, gave like, all right, give us your confused look face. Um, confused as if I'm working at McDonald's or confused as if I'm trying to be the girl from Twilight. Um, kind of in between. Okay. Um, <laughs> the girl from Twilight. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, the girl. Yeah, I know. That's how, you're how she looks. About. But don't bite your lips so much. Uh, <laughs> so. I don't know. I just it didn't resonate with me. I like. I think the story could have done better. I like the bad guy actually a lot. Yeah, the guy with the white coat, uh, cape, and his character was actually really 
it was entertaining to see one of the bad guys get stressed out. Dude, loses shit for the whole movie. Like, why can I not have anything? Like, he's always like, haha, I did this. <laughs> that was super yeah, funny. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Haha, but I did this. Yeah, but you did a bad job at it. Fuck, like, haha, but just I did could that. not win like, at all. Oh, man. And, and then finally at the responses. end when he does have a good moment, it gets overshadowed and uh, Tarkin just kills him. <laughs> so it's like... Damn, that sucks. Yeah, like, he just is having a really bad week. I mean, it really sucked for him. You really made him like tried to make him a side <laughs> character when he could have been like a main a main bad guy. But mm-hmm. um, I think that was a studio's choice for direction they wanted to take. They didn't want to give too much power to yeah the, the dark side, but uh, the Empire. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't ra- I wouldn't rate it high for myself. If you're a fan of Star Wars, yeah, you're gonna love it. Yeah, it has a, a homages to people who are old in the original series now they're you know, younger mm-hmm. um, it has you know references to a lot of fighting and Jedi and Force I mean it has some good reference to trying to be sneaky and but still be <clears throat> you know part of the rebellion but you know but also fight for what you believe in yeah it just seemed like nobody cared like they were just following orders like, I, I think that they made the point in the movie that you're acting too much like the robots you're acting too much like the droids or like the clones or whatever yeah. it may be and I don't know. It didn't seem like they cared. Like, they're just going through the motions. I think that that's what the biggest problem. Maybe it was the acting. The acting could have been better to me. Hmm. Like, the acting, not from the side characters. Like, Donnie Yen and his friend, they did a great job. Yeah. Not from um, the bad guy. He did a great job. Uh-huh. But from the, the main characters, yeah, they didn't do anything for me. Hmm. I was like, okay, well, I guess that's what you're going to do. Like, none of their decisions made sense. Well, it's like, well, I guess we're doing this now, so let's go with it. I don't know. I disagree. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good story um, and a fun fun movie just to kind of go see. It was kind of cool seeing like this, basically what was a throwaway line in one of the original films of, you know, we got this information at great cost to finally see what yeah. it took to get that information to the Rebellion and... Like the sacrifice that was made by everyone involved. Yeah, I mean, you're so I mean, it was right. really it was cool. good to see that. It was nice it, to help my backstory. And it felt more grounded, like the original trilogy did. It didn't feel like all CG and stuff, like episodes one, two, and three. Maybe it didn't that's feel like they were throwing in so many garbage characters that are just there to sell toys and like it felt more. And also the fact that it's just a one-off story with all these characters, like you don't have three four five stories involving this one character to really invest in their their backstory and mm-hmm. where they're going and care about them necessarily so like when a character dies it's not as big of a deal because you've only known them for an hour or two hours right. or whatever right um and you know going forward we don't see them again in any of the other movies so why should i care about these characters and they only have this one movie to really sell you on them so like if if you're not buying it, obviously you're not gonna enjoy it as much. But right, I think that's what it was too. Is that I am, I'm glad I know the backstory now. I'm glad I know that. Yeah, I, mean, I always like more information and more knowledge of the. Would you like to know more? But I don't think that going into it, I I didn't have a need to want to know that knowledge. Yeah, I, I it's one of those things I didn't it. know that I needed to know. And even now, I'm like, that's cool. But I still really enjoyed it. I thought just. If I didn't think, if you don't think about it as it's a Star Wars movie, or you're just thinking about it as it's a summer blockbuster that came out in December, but um, I think it's just a fun story of a bunch of people who are trying to subvert a evil organization. I mean, when you break it down to its basic story, okay. like I think I think it works and it's a good story. I enjoyed the the acting and stuff, so I didn't have the issues that oh. you had. So, so we're very hyped even divided with on this. James Earl Jones, man. Like, even that scene, I was like, ugh. Yeah. James Earl Jones didn't do the voice. Yeah, he did. He's dead. No, he's not. Isn't he? No, he's not. No. He did the voice. No. Yes, he did. Look it up. I'm going to have to fact check this. Call me on it. How much you want to bet? What are we betting here? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm pretty confident in Because you're pretty answer. confident, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure James Earl Jones died. <laughs> no, he's not. He still does public speaking. Are you looking up if he was in it or if he... I was looking up if he's dead. Oh, I'm okay. starting there. <laughs> <laughs> he is alive. <laughs> so it was him. We'll just put it towards my points, towards our our, our year okay. guesses, whatever. <laughs> yeah, voice in Rogue One. Good for you. Boom. So... One point for you. <laughs> Don't even go there, because that's what I'm saying. Like He didn't sound right in the movie. Like He has, I think, uh, 15 sentences of dialogue. The first five sounded proper. Yeah. The other ten, I'm like, this is not. You're getting 
off chart here of how you're supposed to sound. Yeah, I, I thought it was weird that he was in it at all. Like I honestly did not expect to see him to see Vader at all in mm-hmm. during the movie, unless it was just at the very end, like when they're trying to board the ship and stuff. So just seeing him at all kind of threw me. I was Whew. not expecting. So it's that getting long. We gotta yeah, we got to wrap it. But anyway, I mean, it was meant to me. I'm glad you liked it. I liked it. I all definitely right. think it's at least worth watching if I, you rent it or. If you're that type of fan that needs, wants to like you know know all about Star Wars, you're definitely, you're definitely gonna have it in your collection. Even, even if you're just you know already have someone, you want to have someone, you're gonna have it. But yeah, it, I mean, it just wasn't resonating with me too much. All right, so, fair enough. I mean, I'll, I won't mind sitting through it or watching it again, but yeah. it's not something I'm gonna buy day one or anything like that. Yeah, so. I'm probably not gonna buy. It. I don't have any of the Star Wars movies. So, own, so moving on with the actual show. If you guys didn't know, this is episode number 17 of the movie cast for TearingTheHype.com. If you guys want to follow us on the Twitters, Facebooks, YouTubes, <laughs> Patreons, Twitters. Twitches, PSN, whatever you name it, just look for Tearing the Hype or Aki272 or The Krill and Flip337. Now, the next thing I was going to talk about was we've already discussed enough of the hype that's going on in the world, the shows we've been watching, things that are coming out soon. Let's go and jump into some of the classics. Okay. Okay. Special segment called Tearing the Hype Classics. If you guys didn't know, this is going to be on our website. You can just look up under the pages. It's one of the top bars up there. And it's just going to say the lists. The lists. Because there's multiple lists there. One of those lists is going to be the classics. Classics. And each, every two weeks, every <clears throat> every month, we're going to release a classic and a, our next segment, which is going to be a surprise. Oh. I'm going to get my, my sound I have right to now. watch the other podcast to figure out what it is. Now, I've been debating back and forth about what the classic has to be, but I don't want to you know be too specific or else it's going to you know, take the fun out of the game. Um, since they're doing a remake of it, and since there's so much you know fan fiction based off of there, or so much honoring for it, I thought we'd just oh, do a nice uh, you know, the Matrix uh, trilogy. Yes. As I, I think well that done. definitely deserves to be incorporated into the classic That's section. a classic, yeah. At there, this point, it definitely is. It changed the way film was made and special effects were handled, so yeah, definitely a classic. Yeah, it's been out for over 15 years now. That's crazy. And, I mean, it, it made some actors careers yeah it made some people rethink about how they want to do cinematography like you mm-hmm. said and it also introduced a lot of new things that no one had ever thought of before so did you see it in theaters I'm i did just curious i did not i didn't see it until it came out on i VHS. saw it theaters three times that's cool <laughs> i did not i saw it 27 and a half times and they were all on vhs yeah i saw actually them. some of those were on dvd by the time i got to that high but i saw yeah. them all in theaters um but yeah, this one was the first one. I was younger and they're in this one, of course, obviously. Right. And I was like, what the hell? I have no idea, but this is awesome. <laughs> I had a friend that was like, hey, have you seen The Matrix? And I was with a bunch of friends at the time. And most of us were like, no, what is it? And he's like, I can't really tell you. You have to see it. And I was like, what kind of bullshit answer is yeah. this? Tell me what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's one thing. Like, before this movie, there wasn't a whole lot of other movies that made you have to think so outside the box. Yeah. Made you have to think. Very, like, open most your, of them were pretty straightforward. Open your brain up to think of the concept. Yeah. And the twist. And like also, the twist didn't just happen at the end of the movie, like most movies before it. Mm-hmm. Where, oh, this is the straight path, and bam! Check mm-hmm. this shit out. Like, no, this is like, bam at the beginning, and yeah. wow, look at the world they've built and for it. This was like early days of the internet, so it's not like I could just go pull up IMDb and be like, oh, yeah. what is this? Let me go look it up. Oh, everyone on Twitter is talking about this one movie. Let me find out more. This was during 56K. Yeah, yeah so it's like so, information was much harder to come across. So definitely add up to the list. I think that it deserves to be in the classics. It was nominated for a few awards. I'm not sure how many of it won. One of I know it won at least two or three awards, yeah. but I don't know all the different ones, but definitely deserves to be in the classics. Now, when it comes to our next section, which is called HIO! Uh, <laughs> what HIO stands for is H Y E H O. Have, Have you, you ever, ever heard, heard of? of? This is going to be a segment which is also new for you guys, a very short segment where we discuss a movie or a game that you may have never heard of, which you shouldn't know of. You should know of, not you shouldn't know of. Just to you make sure. You should, should know. know it because it is worth the watch. It's more better than not knowing it. For sure. <laughs> God, this is a stupid notification. Doing? So ever since um, we I recorded a podcast, um, it was an audio podcast on here, I okay. tried to just use this to record it. Yeah. And I deleted it, and now it's so big, it can't sync it to my file. So <laughs> sure. every time it says, do you want to delete or save it and try to edit it, I'm like, no, just delete. But it's still trying to sync it, so I'm constantly having to say, delete, 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 delete. So... <laughs> 
Uh, moving on. Well so done. Well done. What, what, are, <laughs> what are a movie you've maybe never heard of before, if you'd like to hold it up yourself, is called Bubba Hotep. This quality piece of cinema right here. Now, Matt, why don't you go ahead and tell the quick fans a <clears throat> short bio, uh, synopsis of what it is. Um, let me just start off with a, uh, a nice reading here of the <laughs> description from the back cover of this classic movie, which came out in 2003 and stars the one and only Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I can put the sleeve back out. There you go. Got it. <clears throat> Mud Creek, Texas is about to get all shook up. Uh-huh. <laughs> when mysterious <laughs> deaths plague the Shady Rest retirement home, it's up to an aging, cantankerous Elvis and a decrepit and black JFK. That's right. Elvis and JFK are not only alive, they live at the same rest home, and JFK is now black. Stay with me. Because to defeat a 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummy <laughs> with a penchant for sucking human souls, can the king show the world that he still can take care of business? Let me oh. tell you, yes, he can. <laughs> because this movie... <laughs> makes no sense when you try to explain it to someone and basically you can't explain it much better than that description so um, tell me why people might not know about this movie <laughs> you might not know about it because because it's i'm pretty sure this never came out in any theater in any way shape or form um but it, it stars bruce campbell who's a fairly well-known actor yeah yeah. I mean, uh, mostly yeah. for like uh the for, evil dead movies mostly for cameos clearly. now yeah and mo and nowadays <laughs> burn, for cameos burn notice yeah Spider-Man. So. Um, so pretty much in the synopsis, so. is, like, like you said, he Bruce Campbell plays Elvis. Elvis. I'm not going to spoil like the mm. story for you <laughs> because I know you're going to go watch it. You it's should actually, go watch it. It's actually free on Voodoo right now. So if you want to go watch Definitely it, check, check it, it out. A few ads you have to watch first. but It's, a it's good been movie. on Netflix on and off too. So yeah. you might check it there too if you don't want to watch ads on but, it. I mean, so Elvis was, you know, kind of... So is, is in just the go with home. the premise that Elvis is alive. Mm -hmm. That he has been... All the rumors are true. Elvis survived. He never technic he technically never died. So he's living here in this rest home, just kind of enjoying his last. Well, not really enjoying his last couple days. He's pretty crotchety and yeah, he's, kind of an ass. He's kind of cranky about how his life's kind of turned out. Mm -hmm. He's very disappointed. Um. So and, what ends up happening is he meets JFK. Yeah. Um. But you know, he kind of also thinks he's crazy. Well, he definitely thinks he's crazy because, because he does not. Even though he knows that he's Elvis. He doesn't believe that this other guy is actually JFK. You can tell him why JFK is black. No. You have to watch the no, movie. No, come on. Just no. tell him. You gotta tell him why it's awesome. Why? So they watch it. <laughs> no. Like, that's... Why would you not want to watch to figure out why JFK right, is black? So, and the fact that they fight a mummy in this movie. With Brendan Fraser. So <laughs> there's, like, this Egyptian exhibit going to a museum, and along the way, a bus like hits a bump and loses some of its cargo and the mummy's soul gets like dropped off in a river and floats down by the retirement home where there's a bunch of old people and to survive the mummy needs human souls like we read on the back and so it starts feeding off of all these old people so elvis is like why are all these people all of a sudden dying such a fun classic movie it's so it's, good it's almost like it wants to be new age back in the in the 90s but it actually came out in like late 2000s early yeah. 2000s so it was it's very entertaining it's not bad quality by any means i mean but it's not the best production it's not value. the highest production values but it's but, I mean, it's definitely good enough it's better than like a sci-fi movie or like sharknado or something like that you're Bruce getting a yeah, lot you're getting better getting quality a movie. it's not like a that at all but i mean you're definitely getting an entertainment factor because yeah. of bruce campbell and his character and how he plays all of his characters mm -hmm. it's just fun and when he's fighting an evil spirit or evil mummy or whatever it may yeah. be he's always making it you know nice little one-liners here and there about yeah things, so i came across this movie uh in the early 2000s when i was in new york visiting uh, a friend of mine we were visiting his sister at the time um and we were trying to find weird movies to rent from this crazy video rental store Right. And this is one of the movies that we picked out on our excursion. We're like, what the heck is this? Why Why is there Bruce? Bruce. Why is there Elvis on the cover? Why is there a mummy? And why does it say JFK? We're like, what the heck is going on with this movie? We took it home, watched it three or four times before we ended up taking it back the next day. 
Like, it was so good. Oh, okay, not the next day. But we did watch it two or three times before we took it back. And we were only in New York for a week that time, so. My goodness. Yeah, no. I cannot recommend this movie enough. It is the perfect way to start off our Hey So, list. guys, if you don't know <laughs> what... <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know what Bubba Hotep is, you can definitely check it out either on Vudu or go on Netflix here and there and watch it for yourself. You can't go to Blockbuster because that shit's gone. <laughs> it won't. But no. I mean, definitely, if you also forget the name, it'll be on our website. Go to tearingthehype.com and you'll be able to find it on the list page. Yep. And that's going to go ahead and wrap up our show, guys. So we appreciate you joining in. Thank you for checking out the movie cast. Um, if you are tuning in on Twitch or YouTube, you're going to go ahead and see our games cast coming up right after this. So stay tuned. Again, Matt, if they want to find you on Twitter, where are they going to go? I don't know. Where are they going to go? To the website. No. You can find me on Twitter at KrillinFlip337. Dude, jeez, calm down. <laughs> Gummy worms, they got me all riled up. Don't take so, a drink because you, you have to talk. If you want to find me, I'm at Augie272, again, A U G I E 272. If you want to find Terror in the Hype, please come and support us on Patreon. If you don't want to support or you just want to find out more details, hey, just subscribe to our, our YouTube channel or just subscribe to our mailing list on our website. That way you can be always up to date on the newest stuff. Again, guys, always a pleasure. Hope you get to enjoy choosing your review with our opinions. And we're out. Thanks. <laughs>